these drawings, you know, like this. And so I'll sit down and spend a lot of time drawing, and these eventually become the paintings. These can become the paintings. Or they just end up being drawings, and it's another exercise. But I've probably filled up 30, 30 or 40 of these over the years, and I have them in the studio. So a lot of times I'll just go out there, what do you want to paint? And I'll just start going through the books and wow. finding things that wow. oh, I've forgotten all about that. You know, cause a lot of times I'll draw at night, and then in the morning it's just like I said, I forget about it mm -hmm. until I one day I sit in the book and I go, oh yeah, I don't remember. Jeez, I don't even remember painting that or drawing that, and and eventually even things like this that you can wow. just with all the little people going to church and stuff. Did just, you just use pencil? Yeah. This is, uh, I use a, a mechanical drawing pencil that with real soft lead so that I can get real good darks. And then you can basically, you end up with these nice three value sketches that you can just, using thumbnails or rough drawings like that, start to put together a painting and see if it works. Do little uh, color sketches, things that are not, not big, just they, they can, all, just three by five type things and that's enough. Uh, and here's some more of those. The basically thumbnail sketches, plan the painting, boom, and then go on to the painting. So take a little time to think about it before you start, or you can do what I do and just kind of wing it. <laughs> <laughs> now this particular drawing. I started looking for something to do, and uh, my, one of my teachers had done a painting one time, it was called Seven Barrels. So I have three barrels here, but he had seven barrels, and they were in front of a, a completely different painting. But it was enough to give me an idea, and then I says, well, I just decided a group, this group, I liked this particular group of uh, houses the way that they were. And I put one here and another one there to kind of balance it off, and a couple of people with their dog. So that's going to be, it feels like it's going to be a winter painting, just from, I don't know why, but that's the sensation that I get. So you don't pre-wet the uh, paper down, it looks like? Just this, I start with just wetting the sky. Ah. Once the sky is wet, normally I would not I would use a uh, just clear, uh, clear water, but uh, I put that on just so you can see it going on because the sky is going to be some, some type of gray or, or it'll be something else. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's always fun to find out what it's going to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here mixing this and just going, man, what's going to happen? You just never know. Do you stretch your paper at all? Or you just no, not the. Paper? No, I, I don't. Is it because it's five? Did you say it's 500 on the pound? No, this is one. This particular one is 140, but uh, normally for a painting this size, I would probably use 300. Wow. Arches, it's arches yes. again? Yeah. What's that, 16 by 20? It's a half sheet. Oh, would be ha whatever, a half sheet, 22 by... Oh. Mm, yeah. Well, anyway, look, it's about 16 by 20, it looks like. Is that ultramarine or something? It's ultramarine, cerulean, oh. uh, sepia, a little brown. So you mix red. your browns in with your blues, huh? Too? Sometimes. Too cool. <laughs> like I say, I'm never sure what it's what I'm gonna do. I nice. just move along and And you always paint with the paper vertical like No, this? it would oh. normally be at an angle probably 15 degrees. I, yeah. That's, is usually that's much, much better to paint. 
but this is so that people can see in the back. Oh, oh nice, good idea. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to uh, do a demo that way. Yes, yeah. And normally, I don't paint on the side of the painting. I would be painting oh, yeah. this way. Oh, right, right, yeah. yeah. He's so kind to his audience. Yes. <laughs> well, it's kind of you to show up. <laughs> See, I demo all the time, but I do it at home, and nobody's there. <laughs> <laughs> Some people say, well, how do you get up in front of people? Well, I've been a musician for a long time as oh. well, and so everything is a show. Yeah. <laughs> Once you're on, you're on. Now, if I fail, I'm going to fail big. <laughs> Were you this fast and loose as a teenager? No. No, I was the exact opposite. <laughs> I was the most cautious person in the world. Yeah. So, I got drafted in... Wow, that was so long, 1969, oh, wow. and uh, I got that notice. Uh, it says, yeah, the president requests your, the pleasure of your company. <laughs> and uh, I ended up, I joined the Air Force, and there in, in their infinite wisdom, they decided the place I should be stationed is Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh. So oh, wow. uh, my life went from real slow to like, wow, wow. this is pretty quick. <laughs> When I started studying with Jack Flynn, my friend David Matthews and I would, David would pick me up on a Sunday morning, probably six o'clock, we'd leave from Hildred Street in Lowell and we'd head to Worthington, which is near, out in the Pittsfield area. We'd drive three hours, take a three hour lesson, and some mornings that drive Going to Worthington, we had people that wanted to drive on our side of the road <laughs> coming at us. We had some kind of adventures. It was truly brilliant. <laughs> but getting to study with Jack, I think the lessons were probably $10. And he gave us unlimited. He gave, I ended up giving us paintings and stuff in return for just showing up. But the one thing he did require it's you had to he would give you homework and whether it was to do drawings or whatever something that he wanted you to practice for the week and bring it back and show me that you're still because he was very generous with his time uh, the painter's name was jack flynn and jack was originally from the pittsfield area he was born in pittsfield uh, he died in uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia, and he was, he was really <coughs> the single painter. He was my watercolor instructor more than any other painter. Uh, I studied with Carlton, you know, took workshops with Carlton and stuff, but Jack, I studied. I spent a lot of time with him because I'd known him from the day I was born. I have a, a card that Jack actually gave to my parents. It's in my the book when you're born, all the cards from all the relatives and stuff in this. There was one there from Jack, and so he was truly a, a brilliant painter. And he made it look easy. He sat at the kitchen table one day, and he knocked out that first watercolor, 
And I went, that's not that hot. <laughs> <laughs>
Your hands are so steady, huh, Don? Which is nice. <laughs> Mine is, aren't always. The reason I paint with the back of the brush, it's a lot easier to control than oh. if you try to do this all the time. Yeah. Those, yeah, you get nice straight lines there when you want them. Wow. So you get quite a variety of trees done with the pines, the oaks with no leaves, whatever. Nice. Ochre, that yellow ochre, and it's just yeah, burnt really, sienna, really or just <laughs> all kinds of earth tones. Yeah, just knocked down with a lot of water. With what? A lot of water. So you like to do that rather than lay out a whole thing of like green lawn or something, or it's so much sometimes, more interesting yeah. that way, right? They say sometimes you just you try it, and if it works great, if it yeah. doesn't, well, start again. But it looks like it's working great here to me. I know, I know what you mean. It's hard.
what I'm going to do is once this dries, I'll come back and put the, the shadow side in. Because yeah. basically the sun, the sun is coming from this side. Yeah. That's a good thing to remember when you're painting. Where is the light, yeah. the light coming from? So the light, if the light's coming from here, the shadows have to correspond. If the light's coming from this side, then the, you'd have shadows going that way. Almost forget about the people. When demonstrator used to put a little cut out like sun in the corner of the painting, <laughs> like that, yeah. <laughs> so he'll yeah. he'd remember where it was. Yeah. In my case, it'd be here. Yeah, yeah. In this one. Uh, is that grass? I mean, what's in the front that you have? That's you just have that shrubby kind of stuff that you thing. see. I guess you could always have a, a, a little water there, too. Yeah, I don't want the water near the house. <laughs> <laughs> There's no snow there, right, Don? In this part there? This, yeah, no. Oh, there, there is just, a little snow? Oh, no. The shrubbery, and it's that kind of uh, dark uh, yellowish grass that you yeah. see in the oh, fields, in, in open fields. In my yard, too, quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> hey. 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 Hey.
Rose Down. Is that a grape stone? No? Just little barrels. Little one. Oh. Barrels. Oh, barrels. You don't see that too often in landscapes. Like I say, the, uh, when I was looking for something to paint today, oh. I came across one of my one of Jack's paintings, and it was he had seven barrels, three here, four there, oh. in the uh, backlit in the painting and the winter painting, and it was in a, a show that uh, we had gone to at the De Cordova. Oh, and it's one of the paintings I always liked. That's the focal point, the barrels. In his painting, yes. Yes, yeah. I mean, wow. Yeah, because they were right here in the front. Yeah. So I just decided to throw yeah, a couple right. in there. In uh, memory of him. Jack, yes. maybe. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's good to, uh, when you're painting, to make it a little darker than you really think it should be because uh, this paper, not as much as the 300 pound paper, will absorb a lot of water, so you need more pigment than you may normally think you should use. Shrubbery. It's, like I say, if you do it for 40 years, uh, one day you wake up and you pretty much know what, I know all my tricks, and so <laughs> it's basically the same every day when you wake up and you just, well, what are we going to paint today? The only thing that changes is the, uh, the design of a painting, but the basic how to put the paint on, and once you can do the flat wash, a graded wash, after that it's just a matter of deciding what you want to paint. What do you want to say about a subject? With me, it's always been the New England scene is the thing that I wanted to preserve because I love those old barns and my dad used to live next to a dairy farmer up in Vermont and he lived there for 10 years. And in those 10 years, when we would go up and visit, I would spend a lot of time painting and I could paint. I'd take my oil paints right out in the street and paint because you'd see one car the whole day. It was. <laughs> It was a great place, and there was one barn after that, so you just moved down a couple of hundred feet, and it's like another barn, and it was a great place to paint. And I still have all the photographs from uh, when I used to go there. To paint.